Welcome back everyone. Welcome back to Shifting Lanes. I'm here with a different car this time. Uh, guess what it is? All right, I'll tell you, cause uh, we gotta go on with the show. Uh, this is the 2022 Hyundai Elantra N. And I'm here to give you a quick walk around and tell you everything about this car. And I am excited about this. This is going to be fun. So this is the 2022 Hyundai Elantra N. It's powered by a two liter turbocharged engine and is making 280, 275 horsepower and 289 pound feet of torque. So I personally own the 2020 Veloster N and uh, this one is the Elantra N. So it's got four doors, it's more utilitarian, it's uh, a lot more useful than my Veloster N, but the driving characteristics it's very similar to the Veloster N. It's a lot of fun to drive. There's a lot of things you could tweak, but let's start with the outside. And as always, if you guys have any questions about this, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer it. But let's start looking at the front here. The front end is a crazy, crazy looking design. I mean, it looks like a clown's face with the performance blue paint and also the red trim. And I love how the red trim goes all the way around. You look at the side here we've got 19 inch wheels this is running the uh, michelin uh, pilot sport 4s tires so plenty of grip these are great tires and you can also see the red calipers there you can't quite see it but there's a letter n on there also big front brakes so the braking hardware is pretty fantastic now looking at the side hey thank you steve yeah hyundai and kia have come a very long way it's insane these cars are so good compared to the hyundai's of 15 to 20 years ago they're just totally different now and if you look at the side here you've got the whole parametric jewel design going on and uh, ariel asks is it gas or electric very good question this is still a gas engine car so still burning up dinosaurs and still making lots of noise hey moose how's it going good morning uh, again continuing with the side here parametric design looks really cool and unique and here you can see the, uh, the the back wheels and also the red calipers Steve not a huge fan on the rims though yeah you could always change it I personally like this a little bit more compared to the Veloster N design but to each their own not everyone is into it then looking at the back and Steve asks is that the manual absolutely this is the manual transmission version and we're gonna jump inside a little in a little bit uh, but finishing out back you can see this black spoiler here it's a little bit low profile and I like the look of it and at the back you can see the dual exhaust and also more red trim so this looks really good in my opinion it's not for everyone if you like the design please let us know in the comments below and if you don't like it also let us know because this is pretty controversial especially up here with that said let's jump inside look at this performance blue it's so good looking oh man look at these seats these seats are definitely a big upgrade over the my veloster n this is leather and micro suede it looks really good nor also you could see this n uh this thing lights up at the uh, at night so actually it's lighting up right now but you can't really see that it's lit up but this feels really really good and looking over here there it is that's a six-speed manual transmission and also the uh, handbrake right there and Steve says I see NJ plates my home state guess what Steve we're also in New Jersey right here so uh, good good uh, good to hear a fellow uh, uh, New Jersey <laughs> Uh, Ariel says love the interior yeah absolutely and let's take a look at the front of the interior let's just jump inside because it is a little bit warm outside so six-speed manual transmission the gearing ratio is slightly different than the Veloster N it's slightly taller here uh, and up here you can see the different drive modes and then also when you press that you can see your backup camera but Everything about the interior just looks a little bit better than my Veloster N. And you've got this dual 10.3 inch screen on here. And um, yeah, if you go here, 
you've got different screens on there. You've got your end mode. And what I love about this end mode screen is that these are all widgets. So you could put different things on there if you want to. You've got your different driving parameters and you could modify that and you could put it in there. So if I go, let's see, let's go back. I could just tweak the engine settings right from this widget. I could tweak the steering. It's just really flexible and I just love the screen. I know that they've gone through several different iterations, but this is like the best one so far. And there's also a second page and you've got your G meters and everything like that. Um, really versatile. And if you look at the uh, fully digital instrument cluster, this is great. You know, this is much more advanced than my Veloster N. And if you go into N mode, there it is, the display changes. And hopefully you guys could hear this, but the best part of this car is really the exhaust. So let me give it a rev. It sounds really good. So it's got like that whole anti-lag thing where it tries to kind of uh, delay the timing of the engine so that part of the combustion occurs outside of the cylinder so that you can excite the gases a little bit more and then it spools up the turbo more. So really cool design and it's it's awesome to find it in a $33,000 car. <laughs> hey Steven, yeah, Pop Pops, I'm glad that you could hear that because it sounds like music to my ears. Uh, horsepower and torque specs, this is, uh, I think it's 275 horsepower or 276 horsepower and 289 pound-feet of torque. So it's making more, just one extra horsepower and 29 pound-feet of torque more than my Veloster N. But overall, you know, what a delightful car. I'm gonna jump into the back seat so you guys can see the front seats better. <coughs> and if you look at the back seat, more of that same leather and micro suede interior. But jumping inside here, look at that. Look at the steering wheel. Love the performance blue buttons. You've got the red, that's the rev matching button. So that's a, that's a rev matching button because this is a manual transmission. Now if you get the dual clutch version, uh, there's there's a couple of different things going on there in the, with the dual clutch version. Uh, the dual clutch is much, much faster than this car. The zero to 60 time for this thing is probably in the six to six and a half second range, depending on launch control, weather conditions, and how fast you are at shifting. But with the dual clutch transmission, it's about one second faster. You know, you don't have to deal with shifting and it, you could also, um, it could just do it m more reliably and all the time. And there's a couple of things going on with the dual clutch transmission. There's this thing called the NGS and that red, red button, which says rev right now for the manual transmission. When you get the dual clutch version, that becomes the NGS button. So when you press the NGS or what's called the N-Grin shift, it gives you, it's an overboost function so that your engine is going to make more torque uh, than original. And it only gives you like about 20 seconds of added power and torque. So it's kind of like a, um, kind of like a nitrous function <laughs> in a video game. So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty insane. Uh, and it also has other things like end track, end track shift sense. So with that, when you're hard on the brakes, it will just downshift for you because it thinks that you're going to exit the turn. So it allows you to give, it allows you to have more revs so that you could apply the power. And lastly, there's also a, such a thing called the NPS or N power shift. So when it senses that your throttle is more than 90%, it will basically power shift for you. It's kind of like power shifting in manual transmission. So basically your, um, your shift times are much faster. So um, Steve Veldkamp has another question. He says, I know Toyota has fake sound interior to make this engine sound meatier. I hope those don't have the fake sound and that was actual engine noise. Well, the pop pops are actually real. You can hear it. Um, 
but it does slightly tweak the engine uh, sound inside. There is such a thing like a, like a sound generator inside and it just slightly tweaks it. Uh, I know a lot of people who own these cars take that part out immediately. This car still sounds pretty uh, aggressive even without the added uh, manufactured sound. Uh, but uh, I don't mind it. It just, you know, every car does that nowadays anyway. So, um, but yeah, this car does it, but you don't really need it because the, the exhaust sounds pretty fantastic. Uh, hey James, how's it going? Nice review. He says, I could see Toretto hitting that button in the next Fast and Furious movie too soon, Junior. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I would hit that button all the time. Uh, thanks for the comment and thanks for watching, dude. Um, anyway, with that said, leave uh, your comments down below. I'm currently working on the review for this car for our YouTube channel. Uh, if you guys don't know about it yet, uh, we do have a YouTube channel where all of these reviews, it's going to be like an 8 to 10 minute long review, so it's not that long. But if you want to know more detailed information about these cars, go on our YouTube.com slash Shifting Lanes channel. Um, we try to do about two reviews per week. And of course, uh, I'm always here on the weekends. Uh, I try to do two live streams every uh, every weekend. And tomorrow I'll be back with another car, which I think you guys will really, really like. It's actually not a car, it's a truck, and it is uh, insane. Uh, so we got a couple more comments. Steven Davis says, Hector was buying three Spoon Sport engines with nitrous and T66 turbos. You know how far, how much those things go a week before race wars? It's crazy. Uh, and Steve Veldkamp says, my attention span would be playing with that big screen for hours. Uh, yeah, me too. Um, hey guys, I really want to thank you guys so much for watching all the way up to this point. Uh, I'm going to go for a drive in this thing. Unfortunately, I can't show you that because the reception can kind of suck in several different places. But uh, before I go, why don't I treat you guys to another rev let's just listen to this thing idling Craig says would you would still take the manual period joy is found in the involvement there's always something faster Craig I agree with you 100% all right so let's uh, let's give it some revs shift lights anyway there you have it folks thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next one